We're now going to move on to our third speaker. And I think I have a unique relationship with our third speaker. I've watched this individual continue to grow, set goals for herself, and very rarely let anything get in her way of achieving them. Uh, when I say this is a motivated individual, that would be an understatement. Our next speaker is Eliza Zubadi from World Travelers Toastmasters Club. This is an effective coaching level one presentation, writing a speech with purpose. Eliza's evaluator will be Garinder Garcha. Eliza Zubadi with World, Toastma World Travelers Toastmasters loves to learn from the world. She has been a member of seven clubs in four districts and has chartered three clubs. And she earned a double DTM in less than three years, thanks to her family and Toastmasters. Please join me in welcoming speaker number three with their speech, The Invisible Gift. Thank you, appreciate it. Hello friends, this gift is for you. Please accept it from the bottom of my heart. What was your memorable gift that you ever received? My first memorable gift happened when I was eight years old. During that time, I was a little kid. I'm very naughty. I'm a very cute girl. And of course, as the last in the family, I'm the princess in the family. What I want, I will have it. During that time, my parents little bit sad about me because at the class, I always get top 10 from the below. And they are keep on asking me why you never study hard. One day, my cousin came to my house and she ride her five gear bike. And she came and told me with a very proud, now I can go up and down the hill with my bike. So I looked at that bike, I told my father, I want that bike, that five gears bike. And my father looked at me, you don't know how to bike the bicycle. You don't know how to ride the bicycle. If my cousin can have it, I also need to have it. For her, the bike is a need, but for me, it was my ego. You see, have it. This little princess also need to have five gears bike. And one day my father said, okay, I will grant you as long as you can make sure you get top 10 from the top, not from below. I study hard, I'm on a mission to get my bike. On one day, during the report days, my mom smiled at me, holding the book, show it to me. Congratulations, dear. I'm not getting on the 10, not seven. I get the top two at class. And I was so happy, finally, I can get my bike. I don't care about my class or I don't care about anything. I abandon all the things, I abandon all my books, I just tell my, my fathers, let's go to the bike, buy, let's go to the shop and buy my bike. After one week, I ride a bike, but only round and round the house. Five gears bike, only to use inside the house. Until one but somebody said, hello, that's a five gear bike. Why well, you never go out your house? So on that day, I told my mom, let me help you buy groceries. And I hop onto my bike and I start to go. And I met with an accident. I flew and when I wake up, I already on the road and many people watch over me. 
My father was angry and no more bicycle. My second memorable gift was come from my long distance boyfriend. He said he want to give me something special. Well, I hope it was ring. Not yet, it's not ring. He gave me brand new handphone. You know why? Call me, you need to be with me 24 hours for seven days a week. And you need to open your eyes and close your eyes thinking about me. And after a few years, when the phone is dead, a new latest phone coming up, I also break up with my boyfriend. Yeah. But then I realized that from all these years, I have my invisible key. That I don't have to do anything. It's come daily without me need to do anything. I don't have to work on it. It just came daily. And it was my mom's prayer. Every day, she will just kiss my head, give me a little prayers for God to take care of me, give me a good life, and protect me from any harm. And do you know what? When I lost my mom, I realized that the invisible gift the special gift that actually I always have, but I always never appreciate it. I have it no more. Then I was thinking, is it over for my invisible gift? Then I realized there is so many magics that happen in my life that it can consider my invisible gift. My dear friends, can you just imagine daily about our friendship that every time when we need our friends, they give us the support, the love that we have from our friends or our family, the support they give us, the impact that they have and pass to us. Is it also something that we can call invisible gift? I never meet all of you in person, but some of you, are all dear in my heart and I consider it a special gift, an invisible gift. Sometimes invisible gift is we cannot see but we can feel it, empower us, make us strong and also make us have a joy and peace. And I hope all of us will treasure and appreciate all the little little magic that happened surround us because this invisible gift sometimes can make something impossible become possible just like my journey in Toastmaster everything that I had is an invisible gift until my district director passed me the trophy that's the visible one back to you Toastmaster this is the gift my invisible gift to all of you. Love. Back to you, Toastmaster. Thank you, Eliza, for that speech. <clears throat> Madam Timer, can we get one minute for Gurinder to put his thoughts together? Gurinder, when you are ready, please lead the evaluation and then move right into the round robin. Okay, great.
I'm ready. Hey. Eliza, that was the wonderful speech I listened. I thought that I'm going to follow the evaluation form given it to me, but I was so mesmerized with your speech, I'm going to abandon that and give me my thoughts. Okay. The, I'm going to go through the process what you do in the Toastmaster. First thing is you attract the attention. You brought that gift and it was a good opening and I was wondering what this gift is. Okay. It got my attention, so I was all out to listen to you. And then afterwards, a couple of things which I thought you should have, you did. You looked at the camera and I all the time felt that you were talking to me and sometimes you moved here and there, that was okay. And the other part was the process of your gesture, hand gestures. You had, you are very expert in putting your hand gestures. I could see only the front part of your half of one quarter of your body, but every part, you use your hand like that, this way and all that. That was wonderful. You did very good on the gestures and all that. Your opening was very good. And when it comes to the body, you went through the entire process of how you got the bike. What you did, what were ups and downs, what your father said, what your mother said, you gave the entire story. Okay? And in the end, you concluded all that. And the main thing which you said, the people help you out. Uh, everybody is helped. But could have been a good idea if you could have picked up one particular person, how he helped you, what you did. And probably is, I know uh, Richard has helped you out, but you could have said what he did to you, how he did to you, and how it affected you. And that could have been a good way of uh, telling the people and the other thing, that is what you have to work on that. I inspect your volume of voice is very good. Your pronunciation is very good. You did. I am also, my English is my fourth language. I can understand and I don't know how much language is there. So, but you did good when I come to see anybody whose English is not a first language, whether he is doing okay or not, and you did excellent. And it was great. I'm glad to listen to your voice. I'm, well, I'm so happy to be your evaluator. And I, if I, again, if you come to this club, I will listen to you again. Thank you very much. Okay. Anybody else now want to? Oh, I'm good to, okay. Thank you. Richard, go ahead. Thank you, Gurinda. Thank you, for Eliza, for that. Oh, I really wish oh. we had a, a recording of your first speech, the first time I heard you speak to where you are now, because it has been a tremendous transition and transformation for you. This was really a great speech, the invisible gift and what that means. There were some interesting phrases, though, that caught the air differently for me than we would normally expect to hear them. To, so to say, that you met with an accident. That's not generally the way we would say, it. we would say we had an accident. So, you know, just that difference. Uh, no one goes out to get one, but we met with one. So unique there. Uh, the hand phone versus calling it a cell phone. I had to think about that for a minute as to what exactly was being said there. But there was a unique tie between the cell phone and the relationship that either was unintended or intended, but was subtle. So the handphone or cell phone was given to you as a, a way to keep this relationship connected. Yet when the handphone died, so did the relationship. And that was the only thing that really was keeping it together. So there was that subtlety there, which came out. I, I don't want to steal the Grammarian's thunder, I hope I don't. Uh, you said sometimes an invisible gift is something we can't see. By nature, something that's invisible can't be seen anyhow. So I think to say it's something that we can't see but can be felt would be a, a better use there just to, as a tie-in. 
And then I think I would like to see you as a call to action at the end. Um, you had mentioned that, you know, you really hadn't appreciated the gift that your mother had given you until she was gone. And asking the audience, is there a gift that you've been given that you didn't appreciate? And let them think about it just for a little bit. But other than that, this was a well done speech. Congratulations, Eliza. Governor. Uh, thank you. Uh, Joel, you are the next. You have a minute. DTM Eliza, you gave an excellent speech. You've made a big improvement since you first started. I heard you in your early days. You had a high degree of confidence. You made the story very touching. You started off when you were young at eight years old. You were showing the excitement the bicycle offered. You showed the details. I would have added one aspect about the bicycle, the lesson learned, the struggle that you had after the accident could have been a lesson that inspired you or gave you strength or could give the audience strength to grow because through challenges, we become better. If we have everything we wanted and achieving it, we don't appreciate it as much. So you could have shown the level of appreciation by the challenge of the accident and how you expanded your life. The feeling part, the touch part, you did well. The invisible gift is something you cannot see, but you can touch your heart and touch your life. And the message that you connected your mother was a very touching, and you use vocal variety to express that well. But with all, you did an excellent job and look forward in hearing great speeches from you. Back to you. Thank you. I, it was a red flag. Can I give her the leap for a minute, the leap? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Eliza asked me to give some feedback on her speech, so I'm responding to that request. Eliza, I'm just honored that I got to hear your speech today. It was well worth listening to because there was something for each of us. First of all, I love the structure of your speech. You were talking about an invisible gift. You started by showing us something that was visible and then you came back to it at the very end because you had made visible what you were talking about, that invisible gift. You used stories that were antithetical to that invisible gift. The story, the selfish desire to have something, the selfish desire to remain in touch with you via hand phone, not for you, but because of your boyfriend's desire. And then you switched back to the invisible part of it, your mother's prayers. So I love that contrast. And you translated that to something meaningful for us by talking about how we can pray for others, for the best of others, to pass it on. And that was an inspiring moment in the speech brought perfectly together at the very end. How could it be improved? I almost missed your humor when you talked about you were in the top 10 from the bottom up and you went through it fast. And I had to think, oh, I think she was making humor, but she didn't pause. She didn't smile. She didn't give me any indication that this was humor. And then when you came back and talked about how you got to the top 10 from the top up, it, it clicked. So just be aware that when you're using humor, you've got to give, give signals to the audience and maybe slow down at those punchlines. 
And the final thing I would suggest is that when you give an inspiring speech, consider using a quote that might bring it together. Immediately as you concluded your speech, the quote that came to my mind was Helen Keller's famous quote, the greatest things in the world cannot be seen or heard or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. And that would have been perfect to bring it all together. But excellent speech. Thank you for touching me and inspiring me, as I'm sure you did many others. Uh, thank you. I think the time is over. I think Unity, she wanted to say something. Uh, Richard, can we allow her? Or I will, otherwise, I hand over to you. Yeah, I would prefer if we move on just because we have a, okay. a 30 minute keynote. Uniati, if you'd like to, you can send something to Eliza in private chat so that she 